With a history of family ownership going back to the 1950s, Burns Steakhouse is an absolute institution. Decorated and awarded by the James Beard Foundation, as well as Wine Spectator with its prestigious Grand Award, not to mention the Golden Spoon Award. My spoon is too big. The wine program features over 6,500 labels, over 150 selections by the glass, an absolute monument. And the air of family ownership continues as this is the only steakhouse I've ever seen that actually includes sides. And today it'll be my pleasure to dive into this 193 page wine list with a history back to 1960. <sighs> And as always, we'll start with the following assumptions. The wine team is unavailable as they've all been attacked by a tainted bottle of Fernet the night before. The wine list and menu online are up to date, even though the wine list features a disclaimer while indicating exactly the opposite. And then we'll approach in the following scenarios. We'll approach these 6,500 labels and first try to choose only one with a budget of $150. I'm on a date with someone who wants to try something interesting. After that, we'll, by popular demand, return the $500 category and order three bottles of wine, sparkling white and red. Then we'll up the ante to $5,000 for the same approach. And lastly, we'll finish with an infinite budget where I'm going to do my best to restrain myself. Before we start, I will say that out of these beautiful wine lists I've had the pleasure of working with over the past few weeks, this one made my jaw drop repeatedly. It will be an absolute task to keep myself at bay from simply gushing over some of the incredible selections available here, so let's go ahead and get started. So I've sat down with my date and they say they want exactly one bottle of wine and they'd like to try something pretty interesting and I'm on a budget. And boy, oh boy, have I found some value here with a $35 bottle of 1996 Macon. This is Domaine Albert Goya and Macon as a region is part of Burgundy as a whole. This is going to be 100% Chardonnay. 96, the first vintage of premature oxidation, a subject for probably an upcoming video, but I'm willing to take the gamble for $35 here. I love bottle age and Macon tends to overperform for its price point and I can't imagine at $35 this not overperforming. And you know what? I came in under budget on bottle one. Let's throw a backup in here just for laughs. Rutherford Ranch Cabernet 1994. Now this is right at budget at 150. This is another family owned operation based right in the heart of the Napa Valley with three generations of winemaking history. I enjoy 90s Cabernet. I know this is probably going to be showing some great bottle age as it stands right now. And again, at this price point with already crushing a 96 Macomb before this, I'm still willing to take a gamble on it. Sure, I've broken the rules of this arbitrary made up format. I am altering the deal. But get used to it because I'm probably going to do it again this video. I've resurrected the $500 category thanks to popular demand, aka exactly one YouTube comment, so let's get in there and look for three bottles. Now for bubbles, I see a few classics, some wines we've already enjoyed on the channel before, but let's go ahead and give the Delamont Le Menil a shot. So one of the oldest still operating wineries today, owned by the same family as the Laurent Perrier operations, and right next door to Salon, another that we've discussed on the channel before. So primarily Chardonnay on the blend, looking for freshness and minerality to start the meal here. Let's enjoy it with the absolutely absurd caviar service offered here at Burns. Now all my homies know I enjoy a really great Alsatian Riesling and I see some incredible bottle age here with the 83 Lyon Baia. So out of Alsace, France on the border with Germany, this is going to be a dry expression and this is a family owned operation with a history going back to 1580. So 13 generations of family winemaking to enjoy here. Now there's nothing more American than drinking American Cabernet in an American steakhouse. America! And there's a piece of American wine history just waiting to be enjoyed. BV's Estate Cabernet 1969. This would have been under winemaker Andre Chelestev before his retirement, also before he made the Stag's Leap 1973 that would go on to win the Paris tasting. This is a legendary bottle of wine in every way, shape, and form, and something that I would never miss the opportunity to drink. If I'm being completely honest, on my other screen I'm looking at flights to Tampa right now. Pushing a combined 100 years of bottle age out of three selections under $500 is just a testament to how wonderful the wine list is here at Burns. Now I can't wait to see what we can accomplish with even more budget looking to spend $5,000 on three bottles. 
So let's start with Bubbles, and it's been a while since we've given my boy Eagly some love. Here is his Blanc de Noir Grand Cru coming from the single vineyard site of Le Crayer. Now, the common joke about big grower producers is to say that these are burgundy with bubbles, and Eagly really is the forefront of that concept. The idea that this is a serious, mature wine that just happens to have bubbles is going to be a great way to start pretty much any experience in life, not to mention this meal. Now, for white wine, a quick honorable mention for the 62 Ygrec. We've done that recently, but still, that certainly catches my eye. So let's go ahead and head to the Loire Valley with the Silex by Didier Dagonos, Puli Fume 2008. So incredible bottle age for a Sauvignon Blanc from the producer most well known for making age-worthy Sauvignon Blanc. So this does see some oak Silex referring to the type of soil, a really sort of flinty, steely type of soil that brings incredible minerality here to the wine. Combined with that bottle age, this is going to be a bit of an ethereal experience. Seems like I'm saving up for the red, huh? I'm going for two red wines today. We're going to start with Domaine Dujac's Clos Saint-Denis 1974. I've gushed about Dujac before here on the channel, and Clos Saint-Denis, really their signature production, pushing 50 years of bottle age is an experience I absolutely will not pass up. Uh, Clos Saint-Denis being the Grand Cru vineyard for which the village of Moray Saint-Denis is named after. This is a one-of-a-kind find, and even after the past three incredible three Michelin-starred wine lists we've looked at, didn't even see a single bottle of Clos saint much less one with 50 years of bottle age. So let's finish the night with some Bordeaux, and I'm eyeing the 1933 Chateau Margaux. So a premier Grand Cru classé since 1855, one of the five first growths. In other words, the highest quality level of production for Cabernet Sauvignon in almost all of modern history, and Margaux, one of those five that actually deserves that title. Coming up on a hundred years bottle age, I expect something unlike anything we can ever imagine. There's many a psalm and wine personality that's enjoyed hundred year old Bordeaux and now we get to join those ranks in an imaginary YouTube video. And man, I'm coming in as a cheap date surprisingly. It's again just a testament to the value offered by the wine list here versus the quality and significant bottle age available. Uh, well, speaking of which, let's go ahead and take a look at this wine list as if I had no budget whatsoever. Let's kick it off with 99 Champagne. This is Paul Roger's Sir Winston Churchill. Yes, named after that one, and this is really one of the more important prestige cuvées as it doesn't carry that level of reputation in the States that something like a Dom Perignon or a Cristal does, but it absolutely bats at that level of quality, and of course the legendary 99 Vintage rearing its head once again. I think we talked about it with the Clos de Guas from Philippinot on another list, but here this is going to be really an incredible experience to start the night. So at last we're looking at White Burgundy, and we are in the White Burgundy of Mohreche, the vineyard of vineyards. Now we have some flash here with the Rimini Conti, sure that's wonderful, but I see some Ponceau coming from 2014. I love 14 for White Burgundy, and Ponceau is another of my contenders for some of the best producers working in Burgundy today. Her prices obviously reflect that as well, but I really am excited to dive into a great vintage from probably the single greatest vineyard on planet Earth for Chardonnay. With an infinite budget, it's hard not to highlight the extraordinary Romani Conti vertical that they have in the cellar. That 57 is definitely catching my eye, but I think we're going to stick with something a little bit more eclectic and rather than just shopping from the right side of the menu. Okay, I lied a little bit. We're going to definitely shop from the right side of the menu, and we're going to order the Gruad La Rose, 1845. We're pushing 200 years of bottle age on this second growth of Bordeaux, a very high quality producer. This is before the 1855 classification, so technically this wasn't even a second growth yet, but they were definitely at the top of their game. Ten years later, they would certainly be classified. This comes with a certificate of authenticity, which is great, uh, just like a Beanie Baby used to. And this was rechecked and packaged at the estate in 96. So there's some level of certification that maybe this wine will be drinkable since it only left the cellar at that time. Regardless, I'm excited just to see what the bottle looks like when they bring it to the table. I can't imagine the presentation and I bet this would make even the most hardened of wine directors handshake as they open it. What a once in a lifetime experience. Now that's a little more like it for an infinite 
budget. Yeah, we went a little heavy on the red wine tonight, but uh, at this price point, I think we don't really care. These are three wines, I think, that represent incredible quality and unique experiences, and that 1845 is probably worth the plane trip on its own. So as always, thank you so much for joining me here in Troy's Tasting Room. Apologies as I've been battling a little bit of a cold if you notice something off with the voice. Stick with me as we will of course be diving into more wine lists in the future and starting to explore some new content, just as a sneak preview looking at diving into interesting topics like Premox and En Premier. Also starting to look at the possibility of doing some what would I buy to fill up a cellar type content. So let me know in the comments what you think. As always, I've greatly appreciated your support as we move forward and continue to develop the channel. We'll see you in the future. Thank you again.